what the heck actually happened to T-Pain's cars. Oh my God! I did a story where somebody got fined $7,000 for an exhaust, and that was wild to me. It blew my mind that that actually happened in the real world. Then I went out on the internet, right after SEMA, I think it was, and I found that T-Pain had submitted what felt like an hour long Harry Potter novel of something that just seemed too out of this world to actually be true. And I've tried to stay away from it a little bit, but it just continued to get bigger and bigger. And like, I heard that there was a huge mess with this company called GMG Automotive. So I figured I would give a look at this store, figure it out. I had some friends help me compile as much information as humanly possible, including Mike. So thank you, Mike, for getting me some of this information to figure out just what the hell actually happened to T-Pain's cars. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of an, an unbiased opinion, because to be completely honest, it seems a little bit out of this world. Now, from what I understand, and first off, T-Pain seems to be way too nice, like almost Midwest nice, because from what I understand, this man was very patient with this company for like four years. So I'm gonna try and put the timeline today. You guys can put in the comments below whether you think T-Pain was too nice about the situation or if GMG was actually just a complete buttholes about the entire thing. And the thumb looking spy kids guy just needs to actually make an apology and stop trying to pretend like he did nothing wrong. Which by the way, I'm Alex, Alex at Martini with two underscores on Instagram. And today we're talking about cars. And most importantly, we're talking about the fact that T-Pain had his beautiful S14 and a half destroyed by somebody, by the company name of GMG Automotive, which is pretty crazy. By the way, you may notice I have an awkwardly placed backpack behind me. That is because that is our limited item for December. We only have 10 of these, and then we also only have 10 of the shoulder bags, which you can actually go find on alexmartini.net. If they're gone, don't worry, there's other bags that you can also buy as the months go on. So before we jump into it, I just wanted to let you know. So T-Pain met George at a Grid Life event back in 2018. Grid Life is an awesome, awesome, awesome car show. If you've ever been, you know what I'm talking about. It's a weekend. It's like if Forza Horizon was in real life, grid life is that thing. Grid life's an absolute blast. And sometime they became friends. They were actually pretty close homies and T-Pain wanted to let George work on vehicles for him because they were nearby. So sometime in the later half of 2019, George invited T-Pain out to a drift track for a day of... You good? <laughs> So George invited T-Pain out for a drift day and essentially what George asked for was to borrow T-Pain's Pickle Brick S14 and a half, which was a very fun looking car. I actually knew the car back when it was getting sponsored by Cosmos Racing Wheels and T-Pain said, sure. And George immediately thrashed that thing like it was his own car, completely cheached that mother as hard as he possibly could and did some damage to the engine of the car. What the specifics are, I do not know, but you can very clearly hear and understand that there was something wrong with the car after George had driven it, to which he told T-Pain, don't worry, I'll get it fixed. It'll be fine. You don't have to worry. I'm a mechanic. I work on supercars. You got nothing to worry about. And T-Pain was like, sure, not really a big deal, whatever, totally get it. He can't keep getting away with it! So months later, George had the car and T-Pain started asking him about it. He wanted to just know when it was being done. George was like, well, I can't really help you there. Okay, it's getting worked on. But would you mind if I could use it maybe for a TV show? Super innocent, super easy. Just talking about drifting, some car stuff. And like, it, was really, it would be really cool if I could use your car again. And uh, T-Pain was totally comfortable with it. He figured it was just like a normal show and they wanted to see how good of a drifter he was. And so T-Pain literally said, do your thing, George. A few months later, George calls me and he says, hey man, I have an opportunity to be on a TV show. And it's a, it's a pretty big TV show. It's on a, it's on Discovery or something like that. And he's like, look, man, they just want, they want to see my, my drifting skills. They want, they want me to, they just want me to drift, man. They, they want me to show off how well I drive and, and that's it, man. They just, and, and I don't have a drift car right now that's functional. So how about this? I'll fix your car for free. If you let me use your car for the TV show. Anyway, that happened. During the filming of the show though, the car was pit maneuvered into a concrete barrier damaging the car. This wasn't disclosed to T-Pain until 2021. And I wanna watch the video because I know the video, but I actually haven't seen it yet. And I, I wanna watch the, the, at least a couple of it because I'm very concerned. Oh, that's him. George, the pursuers are gonna be out for blood. They're out for, How's that's that? Letty. Oh, you better watch out for me. Oh, oh all right. that's Pickle Rick. Hey, you still got Cosmos oh, Racing Wheels. Yeah, 
Okay. Sylvia version of this. So Letty's in the show. I actually didn't even know that this was a show. T Pain apparently didn't know about this until this video actually aired, and he got like tagged on it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna skip this bit. We're gonna get into the bit where he's driving like a madman. So what's wild to me is, as I'm watching this is that if T-Pain didn't know that this was happening, if somebody had my car and was doing this to my car and I didn't know it was happening, I'd be absolutely livid for multiple reasons. Number one, I haven't gotten the car back from the first time you broke it. So I would never even give you back the car. The second thing is if I was watching this, if I was here, I would already know that something is a little bit messed up because it's literally a cop chase show and the guy has like a deer killer on the front of that squad car. The dude's off-roading T-Pain's car. Oh my God. <gasps> the Grand Theft Auto his ass. First off, T-Pain's still way too nice. And there's probably some things that I would probably have said like, bro, you should probably just get your cars back. And, and it's that this car is like just smashing up the rear end of this car, right? But you see where he's hitting it. So if he's hitting it on that wheel and he's actually doing enough damage, he's probably hitting the actual, the differential, the control arms, the suspension, pretty much everything that's in terms of the geometry of the vehicle is getting smacked by this deer pounder on top of this car. And he doesn't care. So the car's probably at this very moment, not even straight anymore. It's probably like this, which most 240s are, let's be completely honest. Oh my God! Ah, uh, no! What do you mean no? Oh my God! You can't make this up. That actually happened. Somehow T-Pain was okay with that. Why would you ever be okay with that? So T-Pain finds us out. I'm hurt. Good. And, and, and was also working on his other car, an E46, which was the second car he was building. So T-Pain has got three cars. He's got the S14 and a half, he's got the E46, and then he also has an RTR Mustang that was built by Von Getten, which RTR vehicles is a super cool thing. They're also involved in FD. They got Chelsea Denofa, Adam LZ's Mustang. They're over there. Super cool car, love that car. Um, but apparently he had the second one. So T-Pain was really hoping to have the car back by May of 2022 for a, an event in Wisconsin called Wisconsin Fest. How about that? And George assured him he would be done in time. And just like all good automotive shops that are using and abusing other people's cars, he said, sure. And it just was never actually done on time. T-Pain still went to the event, still went with his white RTR Mustang, which is an absolutely killer car. Shout out to RTR. And so then at this point, according to, to the timeline here, T-Pain's getting pretty upset, rightfully so. I would have been upset after he blew up the car the first time, let alone the second time and holding the E46 hostage. And apparently he also had a Ferrari that needed to get mechanical work done. Not mechanical work, not even a mechanical work, like just small improvement work because of an issue. He could have gone to Ferrari, waited the period of time, but he chose to bring it to him. So again, my Ferrari door is not opening from the outside. I've seen him work on countless Ferraris. I've seen him work on all kinds of shit, all exotic cars, so boom. He go fix this one quick thing. It's quick. And I've set up an appointment at the Ferrari dealership, but they say they can't see me until the 14th. So I'm like, if you can find it and do that quick, absolutely. And I know you can do those quick because you've been doing them super fucking fast. So time passes. George says that he's having a tough time with payroll and that he needs money up front to finish the cars, even though this has been multiple years, okay? T-Pain then says, okay, I will give you the money. I will give you the payroll money to handle this, to get it done. Just get it finished so that I can have my 240SX, the S14 and a half, and so that I can have the E46 back. It, it seems very, very clear that there was never any intention on getting those vehicles done at all, like ever. And there's probably some sort of partnership deal created that didn't have a deadline, didn't have expectations, and it was just a handshake and that was it. And then GMG got too busy and started using T-Pain's name to get more business versus finishing T-Pain's cars. That's at a super high level. Now this car gets yanked and yoinked, still destroyed, still damaged, still needs engine work, and T-Pain is just begging to have this car back. It gets to SEMA of 2022. We've had this car in discussion now for almost three, four years, I wanna say, and he finally gets it back because the vehicle needed to be wrapped. It needed to be finished, wrapped, given back, T-Pain paid for the payroll, everything's rocking ready, good to go. George goes to SEMA with the old girlfriend, has two people finish the S14 back at the shop during this time frame, okay? Because that's all it was waiting on. Apparently they had no experience 
because the wrap job that T-Pain received on this, this car is absolutely disgusting. And there's a few things, not just outside of the wrap, that was the problem. It was the fact that the damage from that was done years ago was still not fixed. Maybe they replaced body panels. They might have replaced some fenders and things like that. But if you look at the actual video coverage, you can very clearly see that the car never went to a location to either get straightened out, to get checked on the chassis, anything like that. Because you have to remember, if a car is getting damaged, even if it's small damage, if it's anything that's causing the frame to do this or, or one portion of the car to do this, you've got problems, especially when it's impact, especially when it's an old car. The car's not new by any means. The thing's a 1990s. So you could very clearly see they didn't do anything on that. They threw some more fenders on it. They put a wrap on it. Looks like trash, barely finished the motor, still needed stuff done on the interior in just hopes that T-Pain would finally go away. And it sounds like T-Pain didn't wasn't really happy with that. I mean, it's he's put the, the video out, he put the whole story time out, which was wild. Because T-Pain's one of those guys that you think is really far away from the industry, but he's actually really involved. He's a really cool guy. And a lot of people in the drifting community were really upset about this and started speaking up, telling him that he shouldn't be okay with what happened. So finally he did speak up. And, and the response was through, you know, a little bit of, of backhanded compliments was that George was also just calling T-Pain, yeah, he's a bitch when he was upset. When this was all coming down, the story time goes out, the first thing that people saw from George after this whole thing kind of transpired was, yeah, he's a bitch, and a screenshot to somebody else. Damn, bro, T-Pain blasting you out there. LOL, he's a bitch. That's from George. George is calling me a bitch. And he's making an apology video trying to make y'all feel sorry for him and feel sorry for his shop. But this was last night. And then there was an apology. There was an apology. I needed to make my video so that everybody can understand kind of where I'm at with the whole situation with T-Pain and what's been going on with him. Um, I wasn't really going to do a text or a picture, but I feel like it's a little bit more sincere and a little bit more respectful to do a video to reply to a video. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened over the period of time where we had the car. Um, I, I'm i not the best at management. I, I've been a technician my whole life. Um, again, I'm not trying to play this. So apparently this video was, was deleted shortly thereafter. The thing that bothers me about the whole thing, right, is typically when you hear these stories, it's the other way around. It is the aftermarket sponsor or the person screwing the business. They, they get them out of the, the content, they don't shoot the product, they don't promote the brand, they don't do something, right? It's usually the person that messes this up. But this is the complete opposite. The shop is this, this place that is supposed to be held to a very high regard, completely just trashing this guy's car. And it really doesn't matter that it was T-Pain. I think T-Pain was just like the signal to get this word out on this kind of, you know, what seems like poor etiquette shop. But I go out there on Google and they still have a 4.6 star. They still have, you know, business. They're still posting all the time, or at least they were last time I looked at their Instagram. So it's like, how do you even fix this? Like, how do you fix people doing this? And I think really what it comes down to is T-Pain probably just trusted the guy as much as he could, because it sounds like they were friends and whatever agreement they had was not an agreement that was written down. So outside of maybe getting really mad and getting his money back, I'm not really sure T-Pain's gonna be able to do much. I mean, if he approved the S14 being used in a video, then maybe that's all the legal approval that they needed. If he signed off on an E46 cooling system being three times the cost of what it typically was on the internet, then that's T-Pain being okay with that. Now, the dude is awesome and I love him. I love how transparent he was. I love how patient he was. I love how nice he was because that is something that's going away in this whole community and it was awesome to see him be as patient as he was and share everything with the industry everything with the community even the points where he said that maybe he kind of messed this up or could have done this or could have done that it doesn't matter t-pain's not in the wrong in the tiniest inclination i just think that he was really looking to have an honest relationship with a friend that also happened to be a potential business partner and every opportunity it could have burned him it did so hopefully T-Pain finds a new shop and he doesn't let that really positive demeanor that he showed in this go to waste because of one poor situation with this shop that I don't think will ever really clear its name no matter how many times they refresh their business page because they got a 4.6 star. So if somebody else learns about this company and doesn't know the T-Pain story, they're probably gonna go to this guy again. But what do you think? I mean, this is one of those stories where it just blows my mind to hear about somebody having such a poor situation, everybody going up in arms. And I'm hopeful 
but I'm a little doubtful that there's gonna be much follow-up from like a legal perspective on this. I, I just think it's gonna be one of those things where TBN's gonna be like, yep, just let it go, we're gonna go to a new spot, we're gonna do a new thing, and a year later, this guy is gonna do, be doing the same exact thing under a new business name, doing something else, and ruining somebody else's sets of cars. Because it doesn't sound like this individual actually understands the depth of what he did and how much it impacts other people like him there's it's a breach of trust you you just start to not trust people there's already no, enough people not trusting other people it's 22 i can't even fucking trust what's shown to me on the news you want me to trust somebody telling me that they're going to finish my car on time with a handshake that's already a rare situation as it is and i just hope i hope i hope above all else t-pain gets his stuff fixed that there's some shops that can maybe help him out because i would love to see that guy i'd love to see that homie rocking around at shano at club fr at wisconsin drift at whatever it may be because he does seem like a really cool dude and we need more people in the industry doing stuff like drifting doing stuff like drag racing doing stuff like racing in general because we need that otherwise the industry goes away so what do you guys think? Let me know below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Alex.Martini with two underscores on Instagram. Today, we talked about cars and we will see you later. Peace.